That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Okay, here's the way that a problem here. And say again, please. Uh -huh. uh, here's the way that a problem. NASA, the world's first space agency, once a pioneer in space exploration. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Developing innovative new technologies that took the first man to the moon all the way back in 1969, guided by a desire to tread uncharted cosmic ground beyond the confines of our home planet, and bolstered by the full endorsement of the then President John F. Kennedy, in a race against the Soviets for space supremacy. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That very agency today is marred by budget cuts, a rapidly aging infrastructure, a lack of fresh astronaut talent, and unrelenting competition from fast evolving and highly innovative space agencies of nations such as China and India. And while NASA still holds the coveted spot as the preeminent space agency for now, in the absence of a massive ripple to distort the current trajectory wave, we might soon see a new de facto pioneer and leader in space exploration. To understand how NASA got here, we need to take a brief look at where it came from and where things started to go wrong for this iconic symbol of cosmic observation and exploration. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, was formed by the Eisenhower administration in July 1958 as a direct response to the Soviet's successful launches of the Sputnik 1 and 2 satellites and the failures of the United States' own satellite project. Under Eisenhower's presidency, the United States decided to split its military and civil spaceflight programs, which had previously been organized together under the Defense Department's Advanced Research Project Agency, commonly known as DARPA, thus giving rise to the iconic independent civilian space agency we know today, one that is responsible for overseeing the overall US space program. And while during the first decade of its existence, NASA's year-on-year -year budget increased exponentially, especially in the few years preceding the Apollo 11 moon landing mission, the budget allocated to the space agency gradually decreased immediately afterwards, moving into the 1970s and 1980s. And since the 2000s, NASA's yearly budget has remained nearly stagnant when accounting for inflation, representing less than 0.5% of the US federal budget since 2013. This is where the heart of the first problem lies. NASA is the single largest space agency in the world, and a large part of that has been due to its commitment towards continued innovation and pushing the envelope of human space exploration to unfathomable heights. But since that historic Apollo 11 mission, no other project NASA has undertaken in the past 50 years has been anywhere near as ambitious or as grand in scope. A large part of this can be attributed to the decrease in year-on-year -year budget immediately following the moon landing mission as the United States versus Soviet space race ramped down. But this budget reduction also presents a serious problem for an agency that is seen as the undisputed global leader in space exploration. Breakthrough projects like the one that took man to the moon require ever-increasing amounts of funding, a shortfall of which can not only result in said projects being cancelled, but also lead to maintenance and renovation of facilities being delayed, and infrastructure failing over time. This is precisely the predicament that NASA is currently facing. On one hand, the space agency is facing possible budget cuts for the 2024 fiscal period that range between a reduction of $1.4 billion compared to the current year's $25.4 billion, and a worst-case scenario that would see the budget slashed as much as 22% equating to just $19.8 billion in funding for the period. NASA's current administrator, Bill Nelson, has warned that the proposed budget reductions for the fiscal year 2024 could have devastating and irrecoverable consequences for the agency, delaying or cancelling many important missions, such as the much-touted Artemis III project, that aims to launch four astronauts to the moon on board a space launch system rocket, the equally ambitious Mars Sample Return Program, and even the planned upcoming ISS research mission 
to enable scientists to fly on private astronaut missions to the space station and conduct hyper-specialized research there. Administrator Nelson went on to say that the budget cut's impact on the Artemis project could hinder future lunar exploration missions, a devastating blow to an agency that, despite its historical pedigree, is falling far behind newcomers like China and India in the race for crewed expeditions to the moon and eventually Mars and beyond. To further add to this problem, over the past 50 years, NASA has garnered a precarious reputation of wasting exorbitant sums of money on dead-end projects and a general lack of focus on what is really important, flying people into space. The latest example of this is the SLS, Space Launch System rocket, that is part of the Artemis III manned spaceflight mission. A rocket that the space agency spent nearly $24 billion on, about $6 billion over budget, and is six years behind schedule, with estimates of additional cost and schedule increases being highly likely. The worst part about all this is that the rocket engines for the SLS are salvaged from retired or decommissioned space shuttles that use older technology, making the task of integrating new systems with the obsolete components a lot more complex than it needs to be. And as if this monumental expenditure in building the outdated rocket wasn't enough, it is estimated that the SLS could cost as much as $2 billion per mission, with NASA considering all its engines expendable. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's privately owned SpaceX is building next-generation fully reusable rockets such as Starship that will be able to do everything NASA's SLS system can at a small fraction of the cost. With similar multi-billion dollar defunct projects over the last few decades, NASA seems to have a major overspending problem. At a time when private space companies are pioneering economically feasible space exploration technology to make cosmic travel affordable, with a much lower funding amount to work with than what NASA gets from the federal government every year. With budget cuts and overspending, there is also the question of the aging infrastructure of NASA's buildings. With so much of the already dwindling yearly budget being spent on expensive projects that bear no fruit, little is left for maintaining or renovating its facilities. Eric Weiser, the director of NASA's facilities and real estate division, has warned that due to underfunding of the agency's maintenance and construction budget, NASA's infrastructure is in an increasing state of decline, with the current estimated yearly maintenance gap at around $600 million and rising. Weiser states that 83% of NASA's facilities are beyond their design life. One of the main reasons for this is the compartmentalized nature of NASA's infrastructure, with each center prioritizing the facilities that are most important to it for upcoming future missions with maintenance and repair projects being put on the back burner year after year. This deferment puts undue pressure on the already aging facilities, increasing the chances of missed project milestones or an entire mission being put at risk. And these woes of deteriorating infrastructure aren't just limited to NASA's Earth-based facilities. The International Space Station, the multi-governmental modular space station project, 50,000 feet and closing has been operating in low Earth orbit for nearly 25 years, since 1998 to be exact, boasting over 3,000 research investigations in its microgravity laboratory. However, with the more than two decade old infrastructure, the space station is nearing the end of its life due to degrading structural integrity, with operations planned till the end of 2030 and official decommission scheduled for 2031. All in all, NASA's infrastructure woes are a proverbial Achilles heel in its future roadmap of crewed and uncrewed missions to the farther reaches of space. Beyond budget cuts and the multitude of problems associated with it, NASA is also facing a shortage of human capital, specifically astronauts, the quintessential resource for any space agency's long-term space exploration missions. After reaching a peak capacity of 150 astronauts in the year 2000, the Space Corps saw a sharp decline, especially after the end of the Space Shuttle missions in 2011 led to a surge in retirements and currently stands at just 44, the lowest number of astronauts for any space agency in the past 20 years. This marks the first time since the 1970s, the decade immediately following the Apollo 11 moon landing, that NASA has had such a low number of astronauts in its ranks. 
and given the agency's goals with the Artemis mission, which includes establishing a permanent settlement on the lunar surface, as well as future cosmic exploration missions to other planets just as Mars, it is clear that NASA will require a lot more astronauts to fulfill its lofty ambitions than it currently recruits. What makes this potential shortage even more complicated is the fact that the astronauts are not interchangeable. They are individually assigned to specific flights and missions based on level of experience, training and crew-specific expertise. As the missions become more complicated, so do the requirements for eligible astronauts to qualify for them. Currently, NASA's entire corps of 44 space cadets have been trained for a singular mission, the International Space Station, making them interchangeable for that specific mission. But with new missions like Artemis, radical and lengthy retraining of 18 to 24 months will be required, for which training programs have yet to be developed. What this means is that, even accounting for the projected delays of the Artemis 2 and 3 launches, NASA may be running out of time to develop and implement a proper training framework in place for the Artemis project, and then train enough astronauts that can complete the upcoming missions throughout the project's life. Above everything else, perhaps the single biggest threat to NASA's space dominance lies in the monolithic level of competition it faces from space agencies of other nations. While the original space race was between only two superpower nations, the United States and the Soviet Union, this time around there are around 25 space agencies throughout the world with launch capabilities, with nations such as China and India particularly being the closest to NASA in terms of space exploration capabilities. China is one of the newer entrants into the race, having formed its space agency, China National Space Administration, just 30 years ago. Despite its relatively young age and significantly lower budget, CNSA has already achieved more than NASA has in the last decade at a significantly lower budget than the former. Having had five successful lunar landing missions so far under its Chang'e Lunar Exploration Program and the recent operational level completion of its own version of the ISS, the Tiangong Space Station, the Red Dragon is now ramping up its space exploration capabilities and ambitions significantly with over 200 planned spacecraft launches in 2023 alone, launching a space telescope significantly more capable than the Hubble telescope by 2024, aims of launching Taikonauts on the moon before 2030, establishing a permanent moon base by 2035, and have its first crewed missions to Mars by 2033. With NASA's budget cuts possibly delaying the progress of the ambitious Artemis project, and China's space agency taking more than a few pages from SpaceX's Rapid Innovation Playbook. It is becoming increasingly likely that China could possibly beat the US in establishing a permanent presence on the moon and becoming the first nation to step foot on Mars. While India is not as advanced in terms of technology, finances and capability as China, the young ambitious nation already made history in 2014 with its Mars Orbiter mission becoming the fourth nation to reach the Red Planet's orbit. And the recent success of the Chandrayaan-3 mission makes India the fourth nation to land a spacecraft on the Moon and the first to do so on the lunar South Pole, an area that its previous Chandrayaan-1 mission identified as having a strong potential source of water. And on the 2nd of September 2023, just 10 days after the successful landing on the South Pole of the Moon, the nation launched the Aditya L1 mission to observe the outer atmosphere of the Sun, monitor space weather, and provide important data that can help humanity understand how the Sun influences the Earth's climate and space environment around our home planet. And in 2025, India plans to launch its first crewed mission to the Moon, putting the Indian Space Research Organization right in line with NASA's Artemis timeline. But whereas China and India are making monumental advances to establish themselves as forces to be reckoned with, where is NASA? It is embroiled in budget cut threats, project delays, overexpenditure, and relying on private American space companies such as SpaceX and Axiom for its missions. SpaceX has been providing launch services to NASA since 2020, taking their astronauts to and from the International Space Station on board its Dragon reusable spacecraft. Meanwhile, the Space Agency has recently awarded Texas-based private space startup Axiom Space with a contract to build habitable modules for the ISS, 
starting with the initial module launching in 2025, eventually expanding to form a complete replacement for the space station by the late 2020s. Make no mistake, as of today, NASA still sits at the top of the proverbial throne of space exploration. But the tide is turning, and this former champion of the first space race might not hold the title for much longer if things continue as they are. NASA urgently requires increased funding to maintain its deteriorating facilities and an organizational restructuring to ensure greater efficiency and proper allocation of resources, which can help prevent future project delays and overspending. If this radical step isn't taken, and China beats the US at the current space race, America may lose a piece of its national pride and an iconic symbol of its progress and ambitious resolve. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more on some of the most interesting stories in astronomy and cosmology. Safe travels, space adventurers. I will see you in the next video.